Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Daphne, Deep Anatomical Federated Network, a program for uh, medical image segmentation based on incremental and federated learning. My name is Francesco Santini from the University Hospital Basel and this project is a collaboration between the University Hospital, the University of Basel and the Fondazione Mondino in Pavia. Why are you not doing deep learning segmentation right now? So the traditional excuses are that you don't have enough data or that you don't trust machine learning or that you cannot share your data to build an overall better machine learning uh, model uh, that can uh, actually be useful for everybody or finally you just don't have the right software. So here comes Daphne. Daphne has the best kind of deep learning. It is deep learning based it includes federated learning, which means that it collects improvements from other users of the same program and it preserves data privacy because the learning is done at the client side and no data is shared with the server or with us or with any other user. It also includes a continuous incremental learning, which means that every few slices that you segment for every subject, you can uh, have the program learn from what you have done and uh, uh, it will improve for, for the next iterations. And finally, it is based on a user interface that is intuitive and simple to use so that everything is under your control. It is uh, really deep ingrained in Daphne that uh, uh, the models are not a black box that you just put uh, your data and you get some segmentation out, but you always see what the program does and the fact that you can check and uh, uh, refine the segmentation is uh, paramount for the functionality. Finally, it's free, both in free as in beer and free as in speech. It's open source and it's uh, multi-platform as it's written in pure, pure Python and can run on Linux, Windows and Mac. The name Daphne comes from the Greek name for Bayleaf, which is also a nice girl's name. That's the, also the reason behind the logo of Daphne. So, in this session we will actually have three tutorials, uh, that means three videos, and in this first video we will talk first about the principles behind Daphne, a little bit more in extent, and we will show how to uh, get Daphne and install it on your machine. In the second video we will have a live demo where we will segment uh, some data using Daphne and we will see the Daphne's functionality. And finally, we will have a third video about how to extend Daphne together, which contains information for developers and some information about the API that Daphne uses so that you can develop your own uh, deep learning models to deploy uh, together with Daphne. So let's start with the principles. The main pillars of Daphne are three. First of all, we value data privacy because your data are never shared with us. This is thanks to the federated learning that I mentioned before. You will segment your data on your machine and you will only exchange pre-trained and refined models with us. The second pillar is continuous learning. So we perform incremental learning on uh, just a few slices of uh, uh, every subject so that uh, we don't have to wait for many, many subjects to be segmented before seeing an improvement uh, in the performance. You can trigger uh, a learning step uh, at any time during your uh, workflow or it's automatically triggered when you export the data. And finally, the third pillar but uh, not the least important is the accountability. We want Daphne to be always supervised. That's why we provide this uh, intuitive user interface. We don't want you to believe that Daphne is taking decisions away from your hands. You will always be able to check the validity of the data and of the uh, work that is produced. So the workflow is actually quite simple. Um, most of the work happens on the client side. This will be done by the Daphne program that you download and install on your machine. In this download, in, the, in this program, you will load the data and then you can uh, auto segment the data. In principle, you can also just do manual segmentation, but the main feature is the auto segmentation and the auto segmentation is performed by uh, retrieving the latest model from the server which is uh, uh, managed and uh, uh, curated by us. Once the auto segmentation is done, 
we don't assume that the segmentation is good. Actually, in the beginning, when you start uh, using Daphne on a new class of data sets that have maybe a different protocol than what it was trained with, uh, this, the performance will not be very good. So you will always have to check and refine uh, the output of Daphne, and this you will see in a moment how it's done in the, um, in the uh, user interface. Once you've done this check and this refinement, Daphne will learn and will uh, uh, check the modifications that you've done to the proposed auto-segmented masks. And once it's learned, you can export your uh, images or you can calculate some uh, statistics. And at the same time, the improved model is sent to the server. On the server, this received model is validated uh, against some uh, data that we have uh, uh, curated and decided and then it's merged with the existing model that was uh, uh, retrieved at the previous step. The final model is validated again to make sure that uh, the performance is still uh, within acceptable limits and then the uh, model is made available to the next uh, user to, or to your next iteration so that you can uh, perform an improved segmentation on your new data. The current core features, uh, the, uh, net, the neural networks that, does, that do the segmentation at the moment are two-dimensional networks. This is mostly done for performance reasons, but uh, uh, it can also be easily changed if we need uh, to support different organs that are better uh, segmented in three dimensions. The segmentation networks that are provided at the moment are uh, muscle segmentation for the muscles of the thigh and of the leg. However, this is extensible and we encourage the community to participate by uh, providing uh, new models and extending the functionality. It implements federated learning, like said, so the model training is done by the client. You will therefore need a reasonably fast machine to run Daphne so that uh, it can perform uh, uh, some small training. However, this is done on very few slices and uh, it will not require uh, uh, very, big, uh, uh, very big resources. This preserves data privacy. It exploits distributed computing because we don't need uh, huge computational power on the server and it can adapt to different data uh, data contrast and different data uh, formats because uh, every user will have their own protocol and will have their own uh, their own specific needs and finally we have the concept of continuous incremental learning which means that uh, the learning is done on uh, a few slices starting from some pre-trained models that are imperfect by design. We have trained our models on uh, a reasonable number of data sets, but these data sets, of course, don't reflect the whole spectrum that the users will use them for. So this is necessary for usability to have a reasonably pre-trained model and also to avoid some catastrophic forgetting, which is uh, a downside of doing incremental learning but we will need your cooperation to make these models better. So how to get Daphne? Daphne um, is free and multi-platform, it's written in 100% Python. There is only one small uh, module that is uh, uh, binary, that is actually external, and we provide binaries for Windows and Mac. And uh, uh, we also plan to use, uh, uh, to provide the Linux binaries, uh, but at the moment uh, you will have to install it from source. The only, uh, the only thing that you will need, you will need to communicate with our server and you will need an API key. This can be requ requested directly from the Daphne website and I will show you in a moment how this is done. If you go on daphne.network, you will reach this website here. Um, to obtain, to download the program, you click on the Get Daphne page and from here you can directly access the GitHub release page. On the release page, you uh, will obtain the latest release. Uh, this will always be the uh, one appearing on top. And if you click on Assets, you will have a Windows installer, that is uh, the .exe file, and a Mac installer, which is actually it's not an installer, it's a zipped package that you can unzip on your Mac. For Windows, you will need to uh, install the Visual Studio Redistributable package, is available here 
and for Mac uh, as the binaries are not signed uh, you will need to uh, in, before the first run to disable uh, the uh, Mac security then execute Daphne once and then you can re-enable the security this is necessary because Mac has an heightened security and uh, since this comes from a Python source there was no other way of doing it at the moment alternatively you can uh, of course uh, uh, download the um, uh, source files and uh, uh, you can get the source package from uh, github and this can run uh, from Windows and I suggest you refer to the documentation for uh, further information. The documentation is accessible again from the Daphne site here on the documentation tab and uh, you will have uh, the download and installation in, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this section here. Please refer to the documentation for any need uh, of using Daphne and uh, if you have any problem, of course, directly contact me. The API key is again accessible from Daphne. Is you will need to contact us. Uh, please fill in this form, send us your email, and we will generate an API key for you. At the moment, this is free, and we hope it will stay free forever. Just uh, select API key request and maybe send us a message. Okay, so uh, this is the end of part one. We can move now to uh, part two in the next video, which is the live demo of Daphne.